one of the first decisions in operation strategy is to determine what you want the operations to do so as to support the overall company or business strategy. So what are all the things that the operations can do and which of these should we pick? We refer to the areas that we can choose to focus on as competitive priorities. These areas of focus are cost, quality, time and flexibility. An important point to note here is that, as the word priorities implies, some areas of focus are necessarily going to be more important than others. There are inherent trade-offs involved, so we must pick and choose. Every customer would love to patronize a company that excels on all these fronts. Every company would also love to excel on all these fronts. Going by the advertising claims of many companies, it would seem that these companies have in fact achieved this utopian state. However, if it were really possible for one company to be the best at everything, why would there be any competition? Let us say I am in the business of producing paper clips and I am competing on the basis of low cost and assume nothing else. You can conclude that my clips are the lowest priced on the market, probably beating the other clips by a wide margin. You can also conclude that my clips are not going to be great in terms of other factors, but we are assuming that these other factors are not of much importance to the particular group of customers that I am targeting. Instead, if my focus is quality and nothing else, and my customers come to me because of that quality, you can see that my clips are going to be higher priced. But what exactly is high quality? Perhaps my company makes fewer mistakes than others, only one defective clip out of every million. Given the customer's list of requirements, such as size, color, finish, strength, grade of steel, etc., the clips meet these specifications in every respect. Or, the clips are more durable because better grade steel is employed. Or, the clips are of superior design and are really good at holding a large quantity of paper, yet without leaving nasty marks or tears. Or, they are simply very cute to look at and have a velvety feel too. Or, the clips include a unique design characteristic not found in any other clips, a safety mechanism that immediately releases if an unsuspecting customer gets his or hand pinched by mistake. As you can see, good quality can mean a lot of different things. We can differentiate between two basic categories, namely, consistent quality and top quality. Consistent quality implies consistency, or the ability to produce the same output repeatedly. That means fewer mistakes are produced. Consistent quality also refers to conformance to specifications, which implies that we have a list of the customer's specifications and are able to check off all of them. Top quality, on the other hand, refers to the other aspects of quality related to design features, high performance characteristics, etc. They are generally more difficult to define and depend on the eyes of the beholder. These aspects also often cannot be checked off from a list of specifications. It is possible for a company to focus on one aspect of quality and not the other. For example, a consistent quality clip could meet all the customer's specifications and yet not have superior design features. On the other hand, a top quality clip with superior design features may have a higher defect rate than a simpler clip. Often, however, if a company is competing on the basis of top quality, it becomes essential to have a very high level of consistent quality as well. A customer paying for superior features usually does not tolerate a clip with a high defect rate. Yet, these two aspects of quality are inherently different and need to be prioritized appropriately. Instead of cost or quality, let us say a company is focusing on time. Competing on the basis of time could mean that the company offers the quickest delivery. Customers who are time sensitive would choose such a provider. Other customers, however, may have different needs, and on time delivery may be more important than quick delivery. Say, for example, you are building a house. You don't need all your materials quickly. Rather, you can arrange for them to arrive according to a planned schedule, which can also help smooth out your cash flow. However, if your materials arrive even a little late, the builders are going to be idle. At the same time, if the materials arrive early, they may need to be safely stored and your cash flow plans may also be upset. A third aspect of time-based competition 
is new product or new service development speed. In other words, time to market. Competing on this basis implies that the company is a leader in coming up with innovative new products and is able to translate an idea into a successful product launch much faster than the competition. Competing on the basis of flexibility means being able to accommodate various customer needs. One aspect of flexibility is customization, which refers to the ability to do different things for different customers, giving them exactly what they want. Another form of flexibility is to offer customers a wide variety of choices and options. A third aspect of flexibility is volume flexibility, or the ability to modify the output volume according to different customer needs. As we can see from this list of competitive priorities, the four basic areas of cost, quality, time, and flexibility break down into a total of nine competitive priorities. Corresponding to each of these competitive priorities, we need to develop an appropriate level of competitive capability. But what level of capability should we strive to achieve corresponding to each priority? Looking from the customer's point of view, every customer would love to patronize a company that excels on every single priority. I would love to get the latest new products of the highest quality, with the greatest customization, with the best timeliness, and at the lowest rock bottom price. Unfortunately, Realism raises its ugly head and lets me know that I need to wake up and smell the coffee. No company can really be the best at everything, despite their advertising claims. As we said earlier, the word priorities implies that every company needs to arrange the nine competitive priorities according to some order of importance. We cannot be everything to everyone, so some capabilities are necessarily going to be more important than others. Narrowing down the list allows us to focus on the top few priorities. We call these top few priorities as our order winners, as they represent the primary reasons that customers choose our company over the competition. Given the trade-offs involved among the nine priorities, if we try to excel on more than two or three order winners, we are not likely to excel in anything at all. Focusing on our order winners does not mean that we can ignore all but these top few priorities. Suppose my company's claim to fame is low cost, and I offered to sell you a brand new car for $2,000. What, you don't believe it's a full-fledged car at that price? Yes, it has four wheels, an engine, a body, seats, a steering wheel, etc. It can seat four people, with a tight squeeze. You can choose any color you want, as long as it's black. The engine technology is 20 years old, and you can expect about 15 miles per gallon. The fine print on the warranty runs into 30 pages, but your lawyer friend figures out what it says. Once you drive it off the lot, don't bother us again. Seat belts are optional. Anti-lock braking? What's that? Okay, now what are the odds you would buy such a car? Clearly, if I offered only low cost and nothing else, no customer is going to bite even at an unheard of rock bottom price. Unless, of course, you really like being a prime candidate for emergency roadside assistance. There is a minimum threshold level of capability that the customer expects on each competitive priority before he or she would even consider looking at what I have to offer. This threshold level of capability qualifies me to even enter the competitive arena. Therefore, in addition to excelling in our order winners, we also need to meet a threshold level of capability on our order qualifiers.